morning and happy Valentine's Day. We have a show full of love for you this morning. We'll take you to Cambodia, Haiti, Guatemala, and beyond to show you how women here in South Louisiana, like Jessica and Katie, are giving hope, opportunity, and a future to women around the world. Plus, the love of friendship. These two have been pen pals for more than 50 years. Their friendship spanned oceans from the U.S. to the U.K. What that relationship has taught them about life and love. Then Dr. Nick shares the secret to making love last. But first, many of us dream of making a real difference in the world. Few of us know how. We'll meet a group of women who have found a way, a big way. They're empowering women out of poverty into prosperity in some of the darkest corners of the world. Take my hands to the promised land and on you I wanna stand cause I cannot do it on my own. Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. 90% of Haitians have no running water. 70% have no electricity. In war-torn Cambodia, genocide, slave labor, and disease are the norm. Costa Ricans fight drugs and gangs. But in those and 13 other countries in crisis, new hope is on the horizon. And I really feel so happy about it because it is income generating. Jobs are being created after two moms and their daughters in America designed a plan in 2010 to fight poverty with opportunity. Really, we're passionate about empowering women out of poverty through the model of business. Here in South Louisiana, women like Katie and Jessica turn that business model into reality by selling jewelry crafted by artisans around the world. We create sustainable business for these women so they can have the education, they can have the health care and the food and the shelter, and it's going to continue throughout their lives. I've always wanted to, you know, have a part in the world to where I could make a difference somehow, some way. I've never been in the position to do charity or, you know, really give too much. Through Trades of Hope, Jessica is now able to give something more than charity, opportunity. That can actually change the world and break that cycle of poverty. Once out of poverty, families and entire communities are transformed. They don't want to beg, they don't want handouts, you know, they just want to be able to live their life and provide for their family. For eight years, Gretchen Hutchkins worked for a charity in Haiti, but she wanted more for the people there. We started an orphanage and a clinic and a school, and those are all really great things, except it just didn't seem to be having the effect that I wanted to see in the community. I was asking God at that point, you know, God, what should we be doing differently? Because we want to be a light. Years later, while living in Florida, she met Holly Wade. Holly was a 40-year-old mother of five who'd recently had a heart attack. It made her re-examine everything. What is my destiny? What is the calling on my life? Soon after, she crafted an idea to sell jewelry, handcrafted by women in impoverished countries. She and Gretchen teamed up and started their research. And we just found so many beautiful things made by beautiful women. And they're women that really just needed an opportunity, an opportunity to shine and to be all that God created them to be. Florence Lacan was one of those women. She's a war survivor and a former Sudanese refugee. She now lives in northern Uganda. So it's really something which makes me come, become so free. That economic freedom sent her son to college and provides for the many orphans she's taken in. She's paying it forward by teaching others to make beautiful beads using recycled magazine pages. These women now, they're earning money. And if they're earning money, there's peace in their home. They're happy. Their husbands also are happy. And if there's peace in their family, there's peace in the community. These are the wrap bracelets and necklaces they create from those magazines. We truly believe that that sustainable business is the long-term solution 
in the crisis of poverty, not charity. It's also not charity work for Katie and Jessica. The company calls them compassionate entrepreneurs. They make roughly 20% commission on what they sell. They can, and often do, jump on a plane to meet the artisans and see their work in person, like these in Haiti and Costa Rica. She said if I say thank you and start talking about that, I will never be able to stop because I have to say thank you too much for, for how much that it's doing for me. I said me too. In Haiti, poverty is so pervasive, women often have to give their children to orphanages because they can't afford to feed them. So this Haitian woman, Shelly Clay, started the Apparent Project. It gave women jobs making jewelry. There's a, a project that collects cereal boxes and then gets sent, you know, people collect them all over the world oh. and send them, but they strip them, roll them, glue them, seal them, and make them into bracelets. So. Mm -hmm. One cereal box makes $40 in product. It's a huge impact to know that your one small part, like one little bracelet that you can buy can actually, you know, put food in someone's mouth or allow someone to keep their children. When Shelly's cereal business bowled over, she formed a pottery business too. It feeds families and funds a health and literacy center. Along the shores of the Red Sea in Jordan, trash turns to treasure. They walk the beaches, collect the sea glass, and they make necklaces out of them. And every necklace that they make is unique. The beads on this necklace are made of fabric. Say, for instance, in the Super Bowl, all the t-shirts that they print for the people that didn't win, all those shirts have to go somewhere and they recycle them into jewelry. Lives, too, are recycled and repurposed. In America, women like Linda, a victim of sex trafficking, get their lives back Today on track. Today was payday. I got my first check. <laughs> I come from four generations of mothers and grandmothers always waiting for the mailman to get a check. And so now with Cherish, I'm making my own money. In Cambodia, women who suffer the horror and disfigurement of acid attacks find acceptance instead of hatred. Jessica says it's a powerful way to purchase with purpose definitely unique and it actually makes me feel good wearing it knowing that you know these women actually were able to hand make this mm. you know making themselves have making themselves a better life every little bit can change the world if you'd like to find out more on trades of hope email me Whitney at weekendswithwhitney.net and I will be happy to get you in touch with Katie and Jessica and still ahead the love and power of friendship, even thousands of miles away. How these two forged an incredible relationship by putting pen to paper more than 50 years ago and how it endured. Then Dr. Nick shares the secrets to making any love last as Weekends with Whitney continues. The new year is a perfect time to make your money work hard for you. Hi, I'm Ian James, financial advisor and president of Capital Financial Group. Like millions of Americans, you're likely paying higher taxes and higher fees than you probably should. With 20 years of industry experience, I have a proven plan to analyze your investments and reduce hidden costs and fees. You work hard for your money. It's time to let your money work hard for you. Call me, Ian James, for a free, no obligation portfolio review and a brighter financial future. Buying or selling a home can be stressful and exhausting, unless you choose me. I'm Regina Roselle with KDK Realty. Don't just trust your largest asset to anyone. Go with success. I've sold hundreds of homes over the last 10 years and I can get you top dollar for your home as well as get you the best price on your new one. Email me at buywithregina at gmail.com. I'll do all the work. All you have to do is pack. Let's get moving together. Matthew. Maggio Buick GMC, your satisfaction's our specialty. We really deliver on Fault River, here in New Roads. Small town atmosphere, legendary service for over 60 years. Maggio, the only way to go. The only way to go, that's Maggio. 
Welcome back to Weekends with Whitney. Did you ever have a pen pal growing up? Well, I had a few, but after a year or two, the letters stopped, which is pretty normal. What's not normal is having a pen pal for more than 50 years. You're about to meet two people who never wrote each other off. Long before Instagram, text, and email, snail mail kept people connected. More than a thousand letters have kept Gay Smith and Dave Wood connected for half a century. It all started 50 years ago when the then 15-year-old American teenager wanted a British pen pal. What made you write? I have a sister who was writing to some girls in England, students, through her teacher. And she was sending all kinds of photographs to my sister and there was a clipping of a picture of the Yardbirds. On the back of it were addresses and names. And at the time, remember I was 15, uh, I was president of Sunny and Cher's Fan Club. So I wanted to become an international fan club president. So I took the uh, picture and I wrote to the guys on the back. In September 65. And you get the letter and think what? To be honest, be it shocked. really wasn't a big deal because okay. at that time I had correspondence in America, in Argentina, Canada, Japan, all over the world. So it was no great big deal. Not, I might hear from her a couple of times and then forget Pull it. off by the wayside. And 50 years later, mm -hmm. she is the only person from that era that I'm still in contact with. Mm -hmm. All the others have gone over the years. Yeah, lost interest. Gay is the, the last survivor, the only survivor. Yeah. Mm. 50 years, it just yeah. blows my mind. So when you look back at these letters, <gasps> what, do you, what do you see? Well, you know, we see a lot of history too. We don't go into it real deep. Um, but there's a lot of references to things that were happening around us. It's about the times mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that we move from and yeah. a lot of teenage angst. Yeah, uh, I was 15. More on your side than yeah, mine. Yeah, a little bit. Which, That's uh, a girl for you. Yeah, yes, there you is. go. Mm -hmm. They shared a love of music, but not their taste yeah. in music. She loved the Beatles. He was into Southern Soul. And I said, you know, I listened to Solomon Burke and uh, oh, Booker D and the MGs and Wilson Pickett blues and a lot of blues. And she thought I was making these names up. I'm gonna wait till the midnight hour. That's when my love comes tumbling down. Somebody to know. Somebody to know. Somebody to feel. Somebody to feel. She really thought I was making all these names up, which is odd, and she was talking to me about the Beatles. Yeah. It is fascinating yeah. how popular the blues was yeah. in Europe. Way it would have to go to Europe and then come back. That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. It, it really began in the early 60s, around the time. Because the Rolling Stones took their name from a Muddy Waters Blues, Rolling mm -hmm. Stones. And uh, so it was immensely popular in Britain. Well, the, these are the actual original letters on which this that's is That's only based. up to 1972. Uh, 19, back in the age of a time. Oh yeah, and I like this typewriter yeah. because a lot. Oh, Gay said that she liked it because my letters were red and black. Well, yeah, that was because was I had a very poor old typewriter with a red and black ribbon, and the typewriter was so old <laughs> that uh, it didn't work properly. Uh -huh. So we got letters that were half black and half red, and I think Gay thought that it was deliberate. Probably, <laughs> I guess maybe I did. And you both saved each other's yeah. letters. Yeah, didn't know we were doing it. No, no, it. we didn't know uh, until many years afterwards when the uh, first time they made a trip out there in '79. Yeah, and she was uh, amazed to see I still had all of her letters. Uh -huh. And I was amazed she had all of mine. And so I copied all of hers, she copied all of mine, so we now each have a full set. Fourteen years after their first letter, Gay went to England to meet Dave in person for the first time. I went to see him with my sister. We flew across the pond, uh, didn't know what to expect, but he lived near Liverpool. And you know, I wanna hold your hand. to Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields. Yeah, um, yeah, we saw all those fun things. Them. Did they stay with you at your house? Yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. this was in and and was they brought saying, us... why are these two women from America? No, no. she knew all no, she about knew us. Because uh, my wife and I were married for 42 years, but I knew Gay seven years before I met my wife. Yeah. She was already a fixture yeah. in my life by uh -huh. the time I met my wife, Anita. So she knew all about me. Were you both a little nervous to meet each other for the first time? I think we, I don't think so. I think I was a bit nervous you? when you came over to England, but only because it was such short notice. Mm -hmm. We managed, we did some Yeah, things. we had a lot of fun. Next time uh, we met wasn't until 95 when I came over here, mm -hmm. or our 30th, oh, so 16 years later. Mm -hmm. Had you both changed? He'd never been here before. 
Well, never been to the States. I don't think we, well, I think we, we had change, but obviously other people see the change more than you see it yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't think I changed all that much. Mm -mm, no, he hasn't changed. I mean, it's time. incredible that we've been writing 50 years, which is odd because Gay, as you can see, is still only 25. <laughs> yes. And I'm approaching 70. I don't quite know how that works. <laughs> It's something to do with the air in Baton Rouge, I, I would imagine. <laughs> he ends up going down to New Orleans, which is something that he's all, he never thought he would no, ever no. be doing. As someone said before I came over this time, it, I mean, it's one of my spiritual homes because of the music. Yeah. I was right. listening to New Orleans music back yeah. then. Yeah. Astonishing. What have you learned about friendship, Bouguet? Live and let live. <laughs> and learn to live with each other's uh, yeah. Yeah. imperfection. Their spouses both died a few years ago, so I had to ask. Now that you're both single, no romance? No, no I think not our really. friendship is far too entrenched after 50 years. Yeah. You know. I think we're too good of friends. Yeah. You know how that <laughs> works. Well, it, it, I don't think things would change. You'd no. Probably screw things up to uh, change, but. You'd probably lose a friend. Down the road. <laughs> that, that is true. Do you have a favorite letter, or is that too hard of a question? That's, that's kind of too hard. I think it's the first one yeah, that it was just so be funny. The first, the first couple of years where it was all light and fluffy and fun. Do you wait funny. anxiously by the mailbox? Oh, uh, yes, I did. Yes, I would. That's something that's been lost, I think. That, yeah, uh, I know. In those now days, it was the, a yeah. bit of an event to receive a letter. Yes. Now, of course, we communicate via computer and it's instant, mm -hmm. which is great. Yeah. Uh -huh. But it doesn't have that sense of uh, something special yes. that it, when it yeah. drops in the, in the mailbox. Their letters may not feel as special via iCloud instead of airmail, but their friendship is stamped first class. Life is lovelier with fabulous friends. And still ahead, Dr. Nick on the enduring power of love in any relationship as Weekends with Whitney continues. Go Roof is proud to serve the Baton Rouge and surrounding areas with our years of experience and quality service. We want more than just your roofing needs. Go Roof cares about the client and wants you to be our customer for life. Roof replacement, repair, vents, and more. Go Roof will get it done. We have excellent standing relationships with all the top insurance companies, so making your claim is fast and easy. A beautiful roof every single time at Go Roof. Call now for a free estimate. Visit Stabs, the Little Village, and Shucks, where the experience exceeds your expectations. There was a great show on Broadway called Oliver, which was later made into a movie, but there's a great song in it called Where Is Love. On this Valentine's Day, Dr. Nick joins us with that and more. Such a great song. Where is love? Will it fall from skies above? Will I ever know the sweet hello that's meant for only me? It's a beautiful, oh. beautiful song. And does love ever fall beautiful from Beautiful song. <laughs> well, that's, that's part of the problem is in the Western society, we're still caught up with Romeo and Juliet and, you know, the maiden being saved and basically the, the notion of infatuation. You know, and, and I read something the other day that I just thought was really powerful, Whitney. It said that we think of love as being blind. And we say that, you know, love is, love blind. is blind. But it's really infatuation that's blind. Mm. When I fall in love with someone, I don't see very clearly. I see only what I want to see. There's another show called The Fantastics where they fall in love and the infatuation's wonderful. And then when the sun comes out the next day, he looks at her and he <laughs> says, I see, I see your pimples underneath those pounds of powder. <laughs> Isn't it great? Mm -hmm. and, and, and she says, well, I see that you're a voyeur and you're not. A, and it's just the sun comes out and we see what really the possibility of love is. But let me ask you, going back to the infatuation, how long does infatuation last or can it last? 
I, I mean, 20 years into a marriage, it's obviously not infatuation. I, I, it's not infatuation, no. I think infatuation in its finest hours are going to move into a deep, solid, lovingly friendship mm -hmm. that continues to have an in-love quality to it. Sure. That I really don't want to be with anyone else but you. But do experts you put know, a timeline um, on that? No, they don't no, put they a don't. timeline. And, and, and most experts, I think, would say that, that infatuation is always the most critical frightening part of any relationship because that's what happens when the sun comes up. Ah. And then you decide, okay, do I really love this person? And you hope you haven't gotten married See? in Vegas the yeah, night before. Right, <laughs> right, right. Now that, the, now that the sun's out and the moonlight's gone, do I really love this person? And one of the things that we have to keep in mind is, is that in the 60s, the 50s, 60s, you know, we were love, love was a function. Family was a function. Mm -hmm. Parenting was a function. The relationship, everybody's roles were clear. Then we get into the 70s and we start talking about things like intimacy. Right. And emotional sharing. And what's your love language now? Uh, and, 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 how, and how do you share your love? And what am I going to put up with you and your quirks? It's, <laughs> it's like, I want to be in 60 degrees at night sleeping, you know, <laughs> and you like it as hot as can be. This, this is the stuff. Yeah. And you see it every this day in therapy, right? This is the stuff of life. And, and you know, I, I think of, 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 again, any kind of relate. When, my, when I think of my parents married for 52 years, it blows my mind. And it blows my mind because I know that my father, if he was growing and my mother was growing, they were changing. Mm -hmm. You know you're not the same person you were when you were in your 20s. No, when we, I got married, you, 20 you, years you, oh, down when the you road. Got married, you know you're not the same kind of parent that you were when you first began sure. with Reed. Don't you think? Sure. So how do, how do people evolve on the same page? Communication and clarification. And what happens if communication one is not and clarification? Okay. What happens if one's not a good communicator? I know there are wives or husbands sitting out there saying, but but I can't get my spouse to really <laughs> share and talk and be vulnerable. <laughs> How do you pull that out? I'm sorry. I'm laughing because I read <laughs> the greatest line once. And they were in therapy. <laughs> he said to the therapist, I don't know why we're here. And she said to the therapist, that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, but you see, part of love, again, is humor. It's like some men maybe don't communicate the, the same way, but I still think that everybody longs for the opportunity to say, this is who I am and what I'm growing into, and this is the way I'm moving and growing. Mm -hmm. And it may be that what I guess, Whitney, I would love to see is that this. Okay. See, that's a, so that when we kind of start moving away from each other, we don't give up on it. Huh? Gotcha. That we can, that we'll f find a way of coming back and starting a new chapter. We're, because we'll be different. And our expectations may change. But we're still going to make that journey together because we've made a commitment and that there is a solid definition of, of love that's rooted us. Sure, the foundation is still there even though circumstances in life may have you turn into the snowman. <laughs> yeah, and, and if, if I may challenge, because it's a struggle for me, any kind of commitment's a struggle. You know what I can get most concerned about? Tell me. Is that I just think a lot of people in our country right now are resigned to what they're in. And it's like, okay, I'll do this till she gets out of college. Mm. or I'll do this until he graduates from high school, and then I'm out. And I'm like, that's, that is not healthy. Let's deal with it right now. What's the problem? Okay. And wherever it leads, we don't know. It sure. may lead to a separation, but at least we can take the moment for what it is, and then I say accept things as they are and not as I would have them. Mm. Well, I, I, and, and that's not a very good answer to your question, but it's as best as I can do. Sure. Accepting as it is and not as I would have it. Yes, yes. Well, and I love the, the resignation. There's no victory in resignation. There is no victory in resignation. Throwing in the towel and giving up. And, the, and, and people are marking time. Yes, yes. And then okay. what happens is we start finding other outlets yeah. for joy, like spending or drinking our bottle of wine every night. Really? Right, right. Or so, our three vodkas. So one's running up the credit card and the other one's at the bar every night. And well, that's not sure, a sure. Or hunting, relationship. let's say, you know, or fishing. Not, not to make it gender based. And not because of it's, it, they really love it, but because it's an escape. 
Is that it? Is that, is that when it? Sure, it, uh, it becomes an escape. Well, and it's also okay. If this isn't going to work, I'm going to go find pleasure somewhere. I'm going to go find my outlet somewhere. Which can be a very slippery you slope. Know, very slippery, slippery slope, yeah. Uh, and, and, but you know, just very quickly, you know, she says, what do you do when someone's not communicating? It, people are always communicating. It's how they communicate. Not by communicating saying, is a way of communicating. By, <laughs> by saying nothing is a communication. It's like, what does that mean? Uh, that you don't want to talk. Uh, yeah. So, hey, but, and, I, and I raise that, too, because there are oftentimes, uh, you know, you were telling the, the funny thing about why are we here, we're, you know, in the therapist's office. That's why we're here. You sure. don't think we ought to be here. But one thinks there's no problem. One thinks there is a problem. And sometimes that's, those are growth patterns. Um, but if one thinks there's a problem, there's a problem. Yeah, there is. I'm just not ready to say that it's necessarily his or hers. We no, got to right. we got to discern that a little bit because again, it could be that one of the partners is always thinking there's a problem. Right. 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 And that's not accepting again genuine love. Genuine love is that there are gonna be problems. Infatuation ain't no problem. <laughs> right. Right? Right. So we can live going from infatuation to infatuation, or we can say, no, I'm in this for the long haul. Yeah, yeah. And I'm committed. And I'm also committed to my continued growth yeah. and Lo development. Love is work. Love is work. Love for self, love for friends, love for, love for spouse, love for children. Love for, yes, love for our world. And a, and a, and a genuine kind of love that, again, says it's not perfect. I wouldn't care for anything else. I'll take it. Love. The perils of humanity are certainly worth it. Yes, love makes life worth living. It sure does. Happy Valentine's Day. Love you, by the way. Let's go love do Valentine's too. one of these hours. It's a great day for brunch or something fun, doesn't Amen. it? Get, you know, the, the first time we met was over a three-hour line. It was. It was. Nothing like breaking bread together. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. And to all of you, too. Much more Weekends with Whitney coming up right after this. Maggio, the only way to go. Maggio Buick GMC, your satisfaction's our specialty. We really deliver on Fault River here in New Roads. Small town atmosphere, legendary service for over 60 years. Maggio, the only way to go. The only way to go, that's Maggio. Atlas Foundation Repair, fixing your foundation problems for more than 30 years while preserving and protecting your trees. Thanks for spending part of your Valentine's Day with me here on Weekends with Whitney. We leave you this morning with signs of hope, opportunity, and love shared around the world. Mm -hmm.